Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School, but here for Teaching in Room 9, I teach math for second graders. Welcome back friends, I'm so glad you're here with me today. Before we get started on our math lesson for the day, I'd like to go ahead and start with our mindful minute. So I'd like you guys to kind of sit up nice and straight and tall, loosen any tension you might be having in your shoulders or your forehead. You're gonna take some deep breaths with me. And as I talk to you, while you're taking deep breaths, I'm gonna talk to you and go over all of the, our zones of regulation, where at my school we like to call them engine checks. An engine check is just when a friend is needing to kind of check in with themselves. How am I thinking and feeling right now in this moment? And once I can take a moment to do some mindful breathing, to regulate my thoughts and my feelings, what can I do in order to help me feel calm and ready to learn? So go ahead and take a deep breath in through your nose. One, two, three, and breathe out through your mouth. Keep taking those deep breaths in and out, in and out. Counting to three as you breathe in and counting to three as you breathe out. But I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about that first zone of regulation. This is the blue zone. So if you are feeling blue, this might look like feeling sick or unwell, maybe feeling sad or upset, maybe feeling tired or sleepy or even kind of bored, uninterested. Maybe you're feeling disappointed or bummed out or just plain old down in the dumps. Okay, when you are checking in with your engine and you realize that you might be feeling kind of blue, these are some things that we can do. We'll go through these each, uh, each day this week that uh, can help you to feel more calm and centered and ready to learn. So the first thing is, squeeze something. This might be something simple like a bean bag or a squishy ball or maybe some Play-Doh, but squeezing something really helps if you're feeling a little bit um, just disappointed, down. That squeezing motion helps to kind of squeeze out all of those feelings that you might be having, releasing some of that tension. Or if you're feeling kind of sleepy or bored, that kind of helps get that blood flowing and you're focusing on what you're squeezing and not on those negative feelings that you're having. Hopefully afterwards you start to feel more centered. Something else you can do when you're feeling kind of blue is count. I love this strategy and I use it often. You can count up or down. You may count the deep breaths you're taking. I often like to count down from either 100 or from 10. And I know that as I'm breathing and counting, once I get to one, I almost always feel better. Something else you can do is ask to jump. So if you're in a school setting, you might have a trampoline or maybe even at home you have one. Um, but I know sometimes if I'm feeling really sleepy or just kind of out of it, um, I wanna do something like yoga or jumping jacks to help stretch my muscles and get that blood flowing. And then um, the last thing we're gonna go over today is when you're feeling blue, you can try to think about things that uh, bring you joy. What is something that makes you feel so happy and feels, fills your heart with all those warm fuzzies? Um, or if you're feeling just kind of scatterbrained out of it, just down, you're thinking about all these things that are making you feel kind of bummed, you can focus on taking those deep breaths and let your mind just escape to a very peaceful and calming space and then when you are all finished, I guarantee that you're gonna feel more focused and recentered and ready to go. All right, friends, hopefully you're not feeling too blue today, but maybe if you were feeling kind of blue, uh, that helped you to feel more regulated and ready to roll. And um, if you didn't feel blue today, um, I'm glad that you're feeling well. And hopefully if you do feel blue, that will give you some ideas of things you can do when you're in that blue, uh, that blue zone. All right, friends. Let's go ahead and go over our learning goals or objectives for the week. We put these in our I can statements so you know what can I do or know when we're through with our lesson here today. 
So I can't understand the place value of three digit numbers. Uh, this carried over from last week as well. We're kind of focusing on recognizing groups of numbers without counting and really breaking down those three digit numbers. And then taking it a step further, because we talked about how math always builds on itself. This week, we're also focusing on comparing two three digit numbers. And by doing that, we focus on using these symbols are greater than, less than, and equal to. All right, so that's what we're gonna be focusing on together this week. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and sort of turn my friends so you guys can see this chart over here. And can I get a me too? Do you recognize this chart from our lessons before? Yeah, I'm seeing some me too's. I know my friends remember going over this before, but maybe if you forgot, I thought this might refresh our brains of kind of what goes into a three digit number. So any three digit number, just like this one that we have written here, is broken down into hundreds, tens, and ones. And in each space in our hundreds, tens, and ones chart, uh, we have a digit, and a digit is a number that, or a symbol that represents a whole number. So this symbol represents the value, and the value is the amount each digit is worth. So when we're looking at place value, we're going to look at the value of the digit based on its place or its spot in the number. So that's what we are doing here. So we focused a lot last week on um, breaking down, decomposing 10, and then we also worked on putting um, numbers, um, putting our 10 ones all together into building 100. So let's go ahead and do that again, just for our brains to know. So if I have, whoopsies, 10 ones, they are all together on their own. So here are my 10 ones. These are like ones in the ones uh, place in our three digit number. So I've got 10 ones here. When you've got 10 ones, you can put them all together. So you might remember our song. We're gonna go ahead and sing our song from last week as well. It goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, ten, ones makes ten. All right, you guys remember singing that together? Yeah, so you saw I had all my ten ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, ones makes ten. Once we have ten ones, they shoop, transform into a ten. And then once we get a bunch of tens together, we can put them together to build a hundred. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Tens makes one hundred. If we want to know the value of the tens, then we skip count. You guys ready? We're gonna skip count uh, our, through our tens all the way up to 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 ones. So we put all our tens together, which all have 10 ones in each, to put them into this hundreds block. 100 ones is the same value as 10 tens. Let's do it again. Great job, friends. So that was just kind of a review that we take those individual little ones and then we put them all together to make a 10. And then when we have 10 tens all together, that makes a hundred, and we can put them all together in the hundreds block. And you can see what they look like here as well. Once we understand better how to build our three digit numbers, then we can work on comparing numbers. So that's what we're gonna work on this week here, friends. So comparing numbers, you're gonna use these three symbols. This one here looks like a crooked L, right? Kind of looks like an L that maybe is a little bit squished and laying on its side. 
So think, crooked L, left is less than. Let's say that again. Crooked L, left is less than. Nice. So this is our less than symbol. I know you recognize this one here in the center. Ready, let's repeat after me. Equal means just the same. Nice. Our equal sign means that they are just the same. So if you're putting this between two numbers, both of those numbers have the same value. And then right is greater than. Nice, yeah. So if our arrow is pointing to the right this way, that means that this number is greater than this number. And the easy way to always remember this, friends, is that I like to think of our less than and greater than signs, they kind of look like an open mouth. So I like to think of like an alligator mouth. And alligators are so hungry and ferocious that they're always going to want to chomp down on the biggest number. So let's do a funny little chant here together to help you guys remember that. Two goofy numbers sitting in a tree, teasing greater gator, you can't catch me. Along came greater gator, hungry as can be, and snapped the biggest number right out of the tree. <laughs> nice job. So our greater gator is always going to snap, chomp down on the biggest number because he's so hungry. All right, and when we're just looking at the numbers here, you're gonna follow these three steps in order to figure out how to compare and use these symbols to make that statement true. So, repeat after me, friends. You guys ready? First things first, start in the largest place. Nice job. So the very first thing you do is you're gonna start in the largest place. In a three-digit number, what's the largest place? Nice, if you said hundreds, you got it. If you didn't, no worries. We're gonna work on this together. And we always know that mistakes help to stretch our brain. So looking at these numbers here, we, first things first, start in the largest place. So we looked at the largest place, which is our hundreds. What do you notice here, friends? Yep, our eight is the digit that's in the hundreds place, and it's an eight on both numbers. So we got to go to step two. Step two, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So that's what we got to do here. Our eight is equal. We started in the largest place, but they're equal, so we go to the next place. And then we can see a four in the tens place and a six in the tens place. And I have the tens drawn out underneath here. Four, 10, 20, 30, 40. So it'd be 40 is our value of four tens, okay? But on this side, we have six tens. How much is six tens worth? What's the value? Nice job. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Which is bigger, 60 or 40? If you said 60, you nailed it, friends. 60 is bigger, so 845 is less than 862. And our alligator, our greater gator, snapped the biggest number right out of the tree. And now we did that same thing on this number here, or this uh, set of numbers down here. We looked at our greatest number. First things first, start in the largest place. Seven, seven. Second step, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So we hopped over. We're still on the second step then. So second step, the numbers are equal, go to the next place. Now I got to my ones digit and it's also the same. Maybe you noticed it just by looking at the numbers, but maybe you wanted to go through each of the different uh, places in the um, in our three digit number for you to be able to double check your work. So we can see that 729 and 729, they are equal. Equal means just the same. And then coming down here to this um, last step, third step, write the symbol to make the statement true. So you're gonna choose less than, equal to, or greater than. I'm comparing the two numbers. 
And here I did, first things first, start in the largest place five in the hundreds and three in the hundreds. So we've drawn out five hundreds, which is worth 500, and three hundreds, which is worth 300. So we can see that 500 is bigger than 300. So this number is greater. 543 is greater than 368. Nice job, friends. I hope this is starting to make sense for your brains. If it's still feeling a little tricky, no worries. We're going to practice it more here together. I'm going to go ahead and swing my friends this way. And we're going to practice exactly what we just did, but we are going to um, practice looking at it in all these different ways. So we're going to look at this three-digit number and this three-digit number and we get to decide which symbol we're gonna use to make the statement true. All right, are you ready? So if you at home, friends, have um, a piece of paper and a pencil, I'd like you to go ahead and grab it so you guys can do this here with me. It's great practice for you guys to practice writing it out just how I'm doing it here. Um, I also know that I sent my second graders home with um, a dry erase sheet, like a sheet protector, so that you can use dry erase marker. You can use that too if you prefer. Okay, and we're gonna go back and forth between the two numbers. So then once we look at all of the different ways that we can represent three-digit numbers, that will really help us to know um, which symbol we wanna use, whether it's less than, left is less than, equal means just the same, or right is greater than. All right, I'm gonna assume you guys got your paper and you're ready to go with me. So I need you to write down the number 249. Okay, let's see if we got the same answer. Ready to hold it up? Three, two, one. Nice. If you had 249 or a two, a four, and a nine written like this, nice job. If you did, no worries. Go ahead and switch your numbers now so that we have the same answer. And whenever we have our numbers written out in just plain old number form, that is called standard form. So we've got it written right down here at the bottom, 249 for standard form. Ready for your next number? 924. All right, you ready to see if we got the same answer? Okay, three, two, one. Nice. If you had a nine, then a two, then a four for 924, you got it. If you need to switch some numbers around, no worries. We are stretching our brains here together today. All right. Now we're going to take that three digit number and we're going to break it down in our place value chart. H for hundreds, T for tens, and O for ones. Okay, let's start with 249. Write down, maybe you want to make an HTO chart on your paper at home. Or maybe you want to just kind of make some lines so that you understand which digit goes in the hundreds place. Ready? Did you have a two? Nice job. We can see here that the two is in the hundreds. We always start at the largest place. All right, which digit is in the tens for 249? Nice, if you had a four in your tens place, then you were right. If not, then go ahead and switch it now. All right, and what number is in the ones place in 249? Yep, you got it, it's a nine. It's our last digit in this number. So when we take our number 249, two is in the hundreds, 10, or I'm sorry, four is in the tens, and nine is in the ones. Now, let's hop back over here and look at 924. Which digit is in the hundreds place? Okay, let's see if you're right. Did you have? A nine. Nice. Yeah, that first number here, this first digit, nine, is in the hundreds place. Now, what number is in the tens place? 
Did you have a two? If you did, then you were right. If not, no worries. Make yours at home look just like mine. Now, for 924, what digit is in the ones place? If you had a four, you were right. You might have also just been able to use process of elimination and realize we had our other two digits up already. So that one, that four there, is going to be the last one in the ones digit. All right, now let's pop back over to 249. We're gonna use model form. This is our base 10 blocks. So I'm gonna also show you with actual base 10 blocks, but we'll do the drawings as well. So how many hundreds or hundreds base 10 blocks, the squares, do we need to draw for a two? You got it, two hundreds. So I drew one, two, big squares, so that we can see the difference between our hundreds and our ones, because our ones also look like squares, but they're teeny tiny. All right, now how many tens? Are we going to draw tens again? These are our tens, and you can see the ten little ones in each ten. Okay, how many are we going to draw? You got it, friends. Here are my four, which I didn't do the best job drawing. We're going to put them here in the tens. Okay, and how much is four tens worth? Ten. Twenty. 30, 40, nice job. So right now we've got our 240. Then we need to add those ones. How many ones do we have? Okay, let's look at which one is in the ones digit. We see our nine. So I drew nine little squares to show our nine ones. All right, and then I have my nine little ones here as well. Okay, we can see our nine little ones. So you can see my place value for 200. So my two's there, 40, and all my little ones are in this corner here, 49. Okay, so while we're talking about the value, let's go ahead and fill out expanded form. Expanded form shows us the value of each digit, kind of like our model form is also a kind of a visual representation or a model in our, in our brains for us to see and understand the value for each digit. So 200 is worth how much? Nailed it, 200. So if you're writing expanded form with me at home, go ahead and write a 200. Then you're gonna write a plus sign because in expanded form, it shows that plus sign between the numbers to show us that once we add all of them together, that sum is going to be the same value as our number here. So then our next one is our tens. Four tens is 10, 20, 30, 40. So we have 200 plus 40. Go ahead and finish it for me at home, friends. What do I need to do? We add our plus and our ones digit, which is worth how much? Nailed it, friends. Worth nine. 200 plus 40 plus nine, which is kind of a number form or representation of our model form we see here. Okay, let's go ahead and pop back on this side. We've got a nine in our hundreds. Better get busy drawing some hundreds. Okay, I'm gonna get busy putting them on my chart here as well. So if I have nine hundreds, I've gotta put nine squares here. Look at all these squares. One, two, three, four, five and six, seven and eight, and nine. Now I've got to add them all to my chart. They're not even going to fit. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900. Look at all of those hundreds. 
I bet some of you at home are already making predictions about how we can make our statement true by using our greater than, less than, and equal to symbols. All right, now we've got our nine hundredths. Oops, I don't want it to fall off. Now, how many tens do you see? So how many should we draw? Got it, there's a two in our tens place. So that stands for one ten and two tens. So 10 ones and another 10 ones is 20. Nice job. So I've got my two tens there as well. And then how many ones do I have? Yep, just four little ones. So I drew four little squares there and four little teeny tiny squares here as well. All right, so same thing that we did on our other chart. Um, our model form really shows us it's a good visual model for um, the value of each digit. So let's go ahead and write out expanded form as well. You guys can do it at home along with me. So we have nine hundreds. What's that value? Okay, if you wrote down nine hundred, you were absolutely right. We're going to go nine hundred. And then remember with expanded form, we add those pluses because it shows the sum of all those digits together. So 900 plus two tens, how much is that worth? Two one T. So 900 plus 20 plus, what's our ones? Four, you guys nailed it. Now let's go ahead and do our word form. Okay, so we're gonna write 249. Give you guys a second to write. Okay. You have this written down. 249. Nice job. Maybe we need some practice with our spelling, with our numbers. That's okay. We'll practice this here together. And on the other side, we have 900. 24. All right, friends, let's go ahead and look at our two numbers. First things first, start in the largest place. So if we're looking at these two numbers here, two and nine, our nine is bigger. So our alligator chomps, it's a bigger number and 249 is less than 924. Thank you for all your hard work, friends. I'll see you next time. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.